Hey guys, welcome back to Life of Bliss. Today I'll be taking some measurements with the 1299s and the Volt 10s that I recently made in Room EQ Wizard or REW. I'll be using a U-Mic 1 and we'll be doing several different frequency sweeps, um, both comparing the two towers, uh, looking at the sealed center channel versus the ported towers, and then I'm also going to be taking the Volt 10s off of the uh, wall mounts for my surrounds bringing them up to the front of the room and doing some frequency sweeps with those as well. I know a lot of you have been asking if the Volt 10s would be a good option for your front stage and personally I think if you're going to be using a subwoofer they'd be a great option. They're very detailed, very clear, so anyways we'll get those up here, do some frequency sweeps with those as well and compare everything. Now as I've said before my room down here is far from perfect. It is an open basement. I don't have any sound absorption panels on the wall just yet. I will be getting to those here probably next week, but um, I don't have any as of now. It'll be interesting to see the differences once those are put in place versus without them. But uh, for right now, it is what it is. I don't have any of that up. But um, like I said, this is more just to kind of show what these speakers are doing in my room right now. Um, and I'll admit, I am very new to Roo, very new to taking these measurements. Um, it's It's been a learning experience for me. I've done quite a bit of reading and I still feel like I've barely just scratched the surface. So um, what I'm going to be doing is taking all these files and uploading them to a file sharing site with a link down below for you guys that are interested in those. You can pull those up at home and uh, you know look at whatever graphs you need to on there. Um, but like I said, I'm pretty new to it. So if you guys have any tips or tricks or would like something different done in the future, please let me know and I'll be sure to try to include that. But for now, let's go ahead and get the sweeps going. So like I said, this video will mainly be looking over the results from doing frequency sweeps. If you are interested in the build process of these speakers, I'll leave some links down in the description below. The U-Mic 1 was placed in the main listening position at 90 degrees for all measurements. You'll notice that the center and right channels are right up against the screen wall, while the left channel has some space behind it, which should have some effect on the response results. Everything was powered by the Yamaha RXA3070 and Yamaha's YPAO room correction was used to set speaker level, distance, and in some of the sweeps, the EQ. So just to start off here, I'm going to show you guys how I have everything set up. I'm going to set the speaker level to 75 dB uh, and adjust that on my receiver. So the front stage should all be playing roughly 75 dB. Um, I am running the Yamaha YPAO um, Auto EQ for the room just for the distance and the uh, the levels. So uh, that's that's set by the receiver. I am going to be doing a few things in the EQ though. So we're going to be looking at through, which means that it really shouldn't be doing anything to the audio signal itself. Uh, just adjusting the levels to make sure each speaker is roughly playing the same loudness. And I'm also going to be looking at what their um, flat or natural. I've, I've not found too much difference between uh, the EQs here. So I'll be looking at the flat versus the through to see if there's any differences in that to show you guys. So we'll start off with everything on through. So there shouldn't be any EQ being done. We'll be doing 10 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And then with each one of these measurements, I'm going to be going to the graph and doing 1-6 smoothing and naming each of these. So this one I'm going to name 1299 left channel and through, so I know there's no EQing done on that. And then I'll go ahead and do the right and center channels as well. So I took off the center and right channel. We're just looking at the left ported tower now. Um, and the graph is in the logarithmic scale going from 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. And this is the all SPL stage and my, uh, my bar here is set roughly at 75 dB here in the middle. So just looking at it here, everything's fairly flat. Uh, there's a pretty decent spike here starting at about oh, 90 hertz going over to I'd say maybe 150. So a little bit of a spike there, uh, a couple spikes down the line there and it really starts falling off about oh the 
45 hertz mark and it dips down but then it spikes back up about the 30 hertz point so um, it has pretty decent response down low normally if I'm listening to two channel music I will boost the bass just slightly um, just because I like a little bit more bass but uh, it does pretty well here is compared to the right channel so the right channel does not have that boost there around the 100 hertz mark um, and this could be due to it sitting up against the wall versus the left channel is sitting uh, kind of off to the corner of the wall and there's about three, three and a half foot behind it before there is a wall. So I'm sure that has something to do with the frequency response. And then also here, the right channel is falling off at about 40 hertz and it never really has that spike going up again around uh, 30. So a little bit of difference there. Um, bringing in the center channel. So bringing back the right channel, I'm doing that one because both of these are right up against the wall. Um, the center channel does have a little bit more of a, a frequency response here at about 150 to 300 or so. And really the bass is actually a little bit more responsive with the sealed center channel with both of them falling off roughly about the 40 hertz area, uh, a few more dBs on the center channel um, compared to the ported tower. But again, I don't know how much of this is due to the increase in volume uh, of the center channel with the auto correction or what, but um, they both do dig down fairly low. So real quick here, we'll look at the ETC readings for everything. Um, this is the center channel, the right channel, and the left channel. Um, I'm not going to interpret it because to be quite honest, I haven't uh, done a whole lot of reading on this yet, but I do know that uh, people do like to look at this. So um, I'll need to get more educated on that before I can speak on it. But um, another graph here is the waterfall graph to kind of show the um, fall off of the frequencies and how it's reflecting around the room. So this is the left channel get the right channel generated and the center channel and this graph is only going up to 300 hertz anything above that uh, I've read it's not uh, extremely useful so um, just looking at those here up to 300. So back here on our main graphs, we're gonna go on the receiver and set it to flat and use the EQ that the Yamaha provides and see what differences it makes with the response. So let's look at the graphs here. Uh, the first graph here is the left channel with the flat EQ enabled. Um, I'll compare that to the through, which does not have any EQ. As you can see, it did boost the low end just a little bit, as well as the high end, uh, which overall does bring everything to a little bit more flatter response um, than just looking at through here. Um, and to be quite honest, when I'm listening to things, listening to movies, um, music, I do have the flat EQ or the natural EQ enabled. Um, either one of those, it just sounds a little bit better. Uh, the voices are a little bit clearer. It, um, it, it just sounds better to my ear, so uh, some of you may prefer to leave everything flat and through and, and not have any of the EQing done, but to me, it does sound a little bit better. Uh, we'll go into the right channel with the flat EQ. So compared to the uh, through, it does boost up the highs again a little bit, and everything else is fairly similar. Um, it does boost the low end, the real low end. Um, but again, it's, it's fairly similar. Uh, the high end is probably the biggest change here. And then we'll go to the center channel. That's the flat EQ. I still need to name that one over here. And the through. So those are pretty similar as well with, again, the boost and the higher frequencies. So the last graph I wanted to look at here was the left and right channels playing together uh, just to see how they responded in the room together. 
Um, this is with the through, so no EQ was added. Um, again, there's that spike around 100, 120 hertz, and the bass doesn't really fall off with both of them playing, or the low end doesn't fall off. I mean, this is about 25 hertz there, and that's still 75 dB. Um, so it starts falling off pretty quickly after that. Um, there's the initial dip here about 90 hertz, um, where it starts falling off. Here is the flat EQ, which it does something similar with that EQ as well, but it does boost the lower end just a little bit, and again, it does boost the high end as well. So here's the flat highlighted there compared to the through signal. Next I remove the volt tens from their surround locations and set them up front on the 1299s to get a good reading on how they would perform as main left and right speakers in my room. So after doing the Yamaha YPAO uh, for the volt tens in the front of the room, um, I've done all the same frequency responses that I did for the 1299s. Here's the first graph here of the left channel on the through setting with no EQ applied. As you can see, the bass starts dropping off here at about 70, 75 hertz and starts dipping down below that. Um, that makes sense because these are the sealed boxes and uh, the DIY sound group uh, recommends anything under 70 hertz. Uh, these, these really aren't going to be shining through like these tower speakers would be. Uh, they recommend a sub for the sealed boxes for these volts. So uh, that makes sense there. Everything else seems pretty flat. Here is the right channel um, on the through setting. Pretty similar. So moving on from these, we'll look at the flat EQs. Here is the left channel with the flat EQ, and we'll look at the left channel with the through EQ. And actually these are pretty similar with, again, I'll highlight the flat here. Uh, same as with the 1299s, it does boost up the higher end. About 2000 hertz is when it starts boosting it a little bit to make it a little more flat. And there's just a couple of dB boosts down low. But again, if you're going to be using this with a subwoofer, um, 70, 80 hertz is right around this area. This is where you're going to be cutting it off. So really anything below this isn't going to matter a whole lot, but uh, it did boost it a little bit. So moving on to the right channel, this is the through setting with no EQ and then the flat EQ. Uh, as you can see, it boosts it again a little bit here on the high end. Um, that's the highlighted flat EQ there. Uh, one thing that's interesting is compared to the left, both on the through setting, it did seem to have a little bit more bass response after the 70 hertz going down to, I mean, almost 40, 50 hertz there. Um, stayed pretty steady. So... I think a lot of that has to do with the positioning of the speaker up against the wall. Like I said, the right channel is almost smack dab against the wall. It's only a few inches off, whereas the left channel does have a few feet behind it. So uh, there's a little bit difference in response based on that. And then last, like the 1299s, I did do both the left and right channel. So here is both channels on the through setting and then both channels with the flat EQ uh, added as well. These actually are pretty similar. The flat EQ does boost it a little bit on the high end once again, but um, for the most part, these follow a pretty similar curve. So I know this video was a little more dry than most of my videos, but a lot of you were asking for the frequency responses for these speakers, so I'm glad I got all this done. I'm gonna throw all of these files on a file sharing website for you guys to download and look at all the different graphs and data as you guys want. So. I'll post a link in the description down below where I upload all that information. Kind of an update on my personal thoughts on the speakers since I've built them. The more I listen to these, the more I love them. They are so detailed, so clear. Um, I've been really enjoying just going back and just re-watching movies that I haven't watched in a while just because it is such a good experience listening to these things. The sound stage is a lot wider. Um, I don't know, it's just, they're, they're great speakers. The surround effects with the volts are awesome. I've never been able to pick up the surround effects like I have with these speakers after I got them in. So I'm really, really liking them after getting them down here in the theater. If you're interested in seeing how I built everything, I'll leave links in the description below. I go over uh, the making of the crossovers, how to build the cabinets, how to finish them and paint them. So check that out down below. Thanks for checking out this video, guys. I will see you soon.